a man in a strange clown mask holds up a convenience store and takes a hostage. A young doctor gets tasked with the night shift at a hospital for invalid patients. But their two paths cross when the masked man makes his way to the hospital with an injured hostage, demanding the doctor saves her. But when the masked man won't leave, questions start to be asked, and secrets will be revealed. Hi, I'm the Arnie Dance from Asian Film Fans, and welcome to this review of the Japanese thriller Mask Ward. And just a warning, this review will contain spoilers. Check the on-screen watermark and skip ahead at the listed time frame to avoid them. Shugo Hayami is asked by his deceased fiancé's brother Kosakai to take the night shift at the hospital he works in. This hospital, which is full of invalid patients with dementia who have no identity, is an old psychiatric institution and is staffed by a skeleton crew of two nurses, a doctor and the hospital director. Shugo watches a news bulletin of a convenience store robbery and is then called down to the mysterious operating theatre, which he has been advised is no longer operational. A man with a clown mask, the convenience store robber, is in the hospital foyer with his injured hostage Hitomi. A gunshot has grazed her stomach and caused a wound, and she needs urgent medical attention. After he completes the surgery, he notices the robber refuses to leave. He seems to be looking for something within the hospital, which piques the interest of Shugo and Hitomi, and they notice the nurses on duty and the dean seem to be hiding something. What is going on in this hospital? What secrets are the staff trying to hide? And what has Shugo gotten himself involved in? In regards to Japanese thrillers, this movie follows a very similar blueprint to most that have come before it. It starts off very strong and will get your interest almost instantly. With a small cast of characters to keep tabs of, this has allowed the filmmakers to spend more time to develop the two main characters of Shugo and Hitomi, while also giving us just enough information to piece together who the other characters are in the movie. However, this is a movie of two very distinct halves, with a running time of almost two hours. The first 80 minutes are gripping and interesting, but as the film attempts to plug in all the story gaps in the last 30 odd minutes, it's when the movie falls apart and leaves a disappointing taste in your mouth. As mentioned, the first 80 minutes of this film are great, and had it ended there with a shorter and more logical wrap-up, this movie would have been a highlight of this year. The mask villain, the clown character, is sufficiently imposing on screen without going too far down the cartoon bad guy route. His presence instills fear in the characters, which in turn instills dread in the audience. In a good way though. Spoiler coming here, so skip ahead to the time on the watermark to avoid. The real villain though is the performance of Masanobu Takashima as the hospital director Tadokoro. Like most movie villains, his initial presence on screen as a fully compliant hostage is initially convincing, but as the film progresses, we discover he is hiding something. He's the real villain here, and he's the person that our masked character is after. One of the biggest negatives when it comes to mainstream Japanese thrillers is the rather unstructured way in which the story folds. As the audience, you're expected to overlook plot holes when the big reveal occurs, but most of the times it just raises more questions than answers, and in this movie, it's really obvious. Some more spoiler talk here. As before, skip ahead to the time frame in the watermark to avoid. The ending didn't work for me. It was unbelievable, and while it tried to be noble with its cause, it didn't connect in a positive way with me. I walked away from this film confused. I enjoyed the first two thirds, but that last third undoes all of the good work. Along with all the obvious flaws we're meant to ignore, for example, we're supposed to find it believable that Hitomi can walk around and climb stairs with no discomfort after receiving stitching on her stomach wound, is the unbelievable plot point that Hitomi was able to pretend she was an invalid patient in the hospital, which enabled her to plan this whole event with one of the other male hospital staff members. If the movie isn't supposed to be realistic, then I can accept this, but this isn't a Japanese schlock horror movie. This movie is supposed to reflect real life and this part just betrays that.
As you can probably tell, I wanted to like this film, and the first half certainly is very likeable, but the ending really puts the whole thing down. However, there is probably a big audience out there who can forgive it, and for that reason, my recommendation is your choice. If you've seen it, what did you think? Thank you for watching this review. Please don't forget to press the like button and consider subscribing to support our channels.